Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and welcome to our lesson on solving expressions with integers. So we're going to talk about substituting, substituting integers, and then practicing. Here's an example question. If we have this expression, 3m plus 2n, and we're told that m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 4, our first step would be to take those letters, m and n, and replace them with the numbers that we're given. So m we're going to replace with the number 2, and n we're going to replace with the number 4. When you have a letter and number next to each other, like 3m, that means 3 times m, or in this case, 3 times 2. 2n means 2 times n, or 2 times 4. Now we follow the order of operations, so we'll do 3 times 2, which is 6, and 2 times 4, which is 8. Once our multiplication is finished, then we can add them Whoops! for our final answer of 14. That's basically what we do. We're plugging in the numbers and then solving like normal. So here, after doing one sample question, I have an example for you to solve. Go ahead and pause the recording. Try and solve this one on your own. Was this the first step that you did? Did you substitute 3 in for x and 1 in for y? 5 times 3, 8 times 1. Hopefully that's what you did. And then when we solve that, it's 5 times 3 is 15, 8 times 1 is 8, and we have 15 minus 8, which gives us 7. So that's how we would solve this type of question. Hopefully you got 7 when you went through and did that one. Let's do some more fun here with um, substituting. We are going to have a, a fraction bar in this one, 5x over 2y plus 1. What you do when you have a fraction question like this is you solve everything on the top, solve everything on the bottom, and then at the very end, after you've solved everything and simplified the, the numerator and denominator, the top and bottom, then you do division, top divided by bottom, numerator divided by denominator. So let's go ahead and substitute x equals 4 and y equals 2. Your equation, um, sorry, your expression should look like this, 5 times 4, and then on the in the denominator, 2 times 2, which was our y value, plus 1. We're going to do all the multiplication in this next step. 5 times 4 is 20, 2 times 2 is 4. Then we'll simplify the denominator, 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. And then we go ahead and solve, 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. That's our final answer. So, I mean, questions like this with the fraction bar can look a little bit more intimidating, but with practice they can get um, pretty easy. So, speaking of practice, it is your turn. So go ahead and try and solve this one, pause the recording, and then uh, restart the recording so that you can see the full solution. You didn't stop it, did you? Stop the recording. Do this on your own. All right. So I'm substituting x equals 2, y equals 3, z equals 4. And it becomes 2 times 2 times 3. 2 times x times y is 2 times 2 times 3. My z value in the bottom, or z, is um, the number 4. So I'm substituting the number 4 in there where we have that letter. Now I'm going to solve the 2 times 2 times 3 will give me 12. Because I don't have any multiplication on the bottom, I can just go ahead and solve this. 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Um, now that I've simplified both the, the numerator and the denominator, both the top and bottom of the fraction, I can go ahead and divide. 12 divided by 6 gives me 2 for my final answer. So that's how we solve this type of question. Again, the math each step isn't terribly complicated, but it can look a little bit overwhelming when you see a question like 2xy divided by 2 plus z. Or a times the quantity of b plus c over a. This one here, again, is sort of a complicated one, um, but we'll go through it step by step. Our first step is to substitute. Everywhere I see the letter A, I'm going to replace it with the number 3. Everywhere I see the letter B, I'm going to replace it with the number 4. And where I see the letter C, I'm going to replace it with the number 5. It should look like this. 3 times the quantity of 4 plus 5 divided by 3. 
Now I do what's inside the parentheses first. 4 plus 5 is 9. Everything else remains the same. The next step is to multiply. Parentheses mean multiplication. In this case, if a number is next to a set of parentheses, 3 times 9 is 27. And for my final step, now that the numerator and denominator are both completely simplified, I'll take 27 divided by 3, and that gives me 9 for my final answer. So that was the first section of, of this lesson, was looking at substituting positive numbers into expressions that can be a little bit complicated, but substituting and solving following the order of operations. In the second part of this lesson, we're going to look at integers. Integers are positive and negative numbers. So when we start substituting some negative numbers in, it can make for um, a more complicated question. Let me show you. I have 6a minus 4b. But the numbers I'm substituting are that a is equal to negative 3 and b is equal to positive 3. So my first step is going to look like this. And this looks a little complicated. I added the parentheses here. I like to do that because that means 6 times negative 3. It's not 6 times minus 3. It gets complicated, and it looks weird if you don't have it separated. So 6 times negative 3 minus 4 times positive 3. I'm going to do the multiplication in this first step. So 6 times negative 3 gives me negative 18, and 4 times 3 gives me 12. So that is what I have. I have negative 18 minus 12. If I have a negative and I'm subtracting, I get an even bigger negative, like I like to say, or we basically join together these two negatives to get negative 30. Negative 18 minus 12 more gives us negative 30. Now we have a question for you with integers. You can go ahead and pause this one and try it on your own. It's a fraction question where you're substituting in a negative number. The first step for solving this is to substitute negative 8 in for the letter A and positive 2 in for the letter B. Notice it becomes 3 times negative 8 in the numerator and just 2 in the denominator. Now let's continue to solve. 3 times 8 is in the numerator, but it's 3 times negative 8, so it will be negative 24. The denominator of 2 remains the same. In our next step, we're going to now divide negative 24 divided by positive 2. A negative divided by a positive gives you a negative result, and it's 24 divided by 2, which leaves you with 12. So that's how you would solve this question, substituting negative numbers into this expression. One more. Challenge question here, where we're sub substituting in a negative decimal. So 5x minus 4 plus 8y, when x is equal to negative 2.4 and y is equal to 4.9. Go ahead, pause the recording, try that one. Your first step should look like this, 5 times negative 2.4 minus 4 plus 8 times 4.9. When we're solving, we have to make sure that we do the multiplication first before we do any addition or subtraction. So I'm going to multiply 5 times negative 2.4. That gives me negative 12. That's kind of nice that it worked out that way. And 8 times 4.9 gives me positive 39.2. So I still have a decimal, but that's not so bad. Now what I'm going to do is work with the order of operations. It says I, I have just addition and subtraction left. So I start at the left, moving to the right, and I'm going to do my subtraction first. Negative 12 minus 4 gives me negative 16. I still have the plus 39.2 I have to deal with afterwards, but I've, I've joined together negative 12 and negative 4. Now I have to take negative 16 plus 39.2. These signs are different. I have a negative and a positive. When the signs are different, I find the difference. So I subtract 39.2 plus 
minus 16, and that gives me 23.2. Then I ask myself, is which do I have more of, positives or negatives? I have 16 negatives and 39.2 positives. I have more positives, so my final answer is going to remain positive. That is my final answer, 23.2, positive answer, even though we've had all those negatives throughout. So that is how that type of challenge question was done. So we did substituting with positive numbers, substituting integers, that's positive and negative numbers, including decimals, and we did a lot of practice today. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.